We're in the middle of a major change in the climate, loss of species, the uh, uh, breakdown of financial systems. All of these things are reflective of a globe that's in rather difficult circumstances. On the other hand, we do have uh, a greater awareness uh, of these issues, uh, a larger commitment to starting to deal with them, uh, a uh, global uh, political machinery that has seen them as issues of high priority, uh, that um, hasn't actually achieved real results yet, but gives uh, one the hope that they're achievable. So you have a problem that's growing exponentially and rather big, a set of problems that together become a huge one. But you also have uh, the beginnings of solutions and a commitment to introducing those solutions that makes one hopeful that you will be able to cut short this exponential growth. But frankly, uh, it's a race against time. Well, the, the ability of the global community to deal with um, the ozone problem, for example, shows that it's not impossible for us to get our act together. So far we haven't done that with other things, but uh, when people understand the full urgency, I think they're capable of making those decisions. So I would say that there is a sign of hope that uh, the global political system is able to address some of these issues, though uh, there are many outstanding issues that haven't yet been dealt with. I would say that um, the recognition by the uh, major economic players of the need for different kind of innovation, different kinds of technologies, greener technologies, technologies that basically uh, include much larger numbers of people as potential clients and much uh, larger potential for solving basic needs, including employment. Uh, this is a sign of hope. Uh, again, let's hope that it sort of plays itself out. Uh, and the third is that <clears throat> um, while the population uh, is inexorably growing and now the UN suggests that we might even reach 10 or 10 and a half billion people by the end of the century, there is a sign that there is uh, stability, stabilization um, going to happen at some point within the century. Um, that's both hope and hopelessness together. I mean, we really do need to uh, slow down the, the growth of population much faster. But at least it's not inexorably going to go on forever. That much I think one can hope for. It's, it's the same and it's different. The, the green economy today has the connotation that it's less good in some way. You are paying a price for saving nature. Or green economy uh, has been projected, has been sold as something for which you have to make a sacrifice or pay a cost uh, in convenience or in whatever terms. Uh, and we don't think that, that is necessarily the case. Uh, we, whatever we've seen from nature-based technologies is that it's a win-win-win situation that you get better uh, outcomes, better products, services, you get better uh, impact on the environment, and you get it more cheaply. So there's no reason why we should go through life thinking that you have to pay something extra to get become green. So we coined the term blue because it's a blue planet, it's a blue um, sky, and, uh, and the blue ocean, and everything else about life on Earth is blue. So we figured that um, it's not a fight between blue and green, it's simply that we would like to convey that it's a good thing on all counts. And that's why we started calling it the blue economy. So the book that describes a hundred technologies based on nature, um, either using nature or inspired by nature, um, as blue economy simply to say that it's a, it's a good thing. 
But one motivation that certainly is very difficult, even for the most hard-headed um, criminal uh, or businessman or whoever, uh, to avoid is the um, hurting one's child or uh, being in a position to make one's child um, embarrassed because of you or, or whatever. So I think uh, children have a huge impact on the psychology of, of their parents uh, if it gets into a situation where the actions of a parent are causing some damage or hardship to the child. So the example I was giving, which is that a business person changed uh, his entire way of doing business because he realized that it was causing um, his um, child's life at school uh, a great deal of hardship um, from their fellow students. Um, this happens. I mean, I've seen it happen several times. And I, I found it quite striking that uh, even a person who thought you were completely immune to anybody's feelings uh, could not handle the distress they were causing their child. Mm. So it's a good way. It's not the only way, but it's, it's a good way.